Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matt Halley. I'm a member of the engineering and marketing team here at Buckley Associates. Before we get started with the webinar, I just want to say thank you to everybody participating today. Uh, we really appreciate the time you're taking out of your day to learn with us. It means a lot to us here at Buckley as a lot of effort goes into planning these webinars. So we're happy that you all see the value and the services we're providing to the engineering and contractor community here in the Northeast. Today, I am joined by John Gramke. He's the sales director for the Car Park Ventilation Division at System Air. Um, today, he'll be discussing the design goals and code requirements in car parks, how to optimize the garage ventilation systems uh, using jet fans as a solution. And finally, we'll be looking at a project analysis and a real world study. Um, we see some really cool opportunities with this, with this company. Uh, they do a really great CFD analysis that speaks volumes in terms of what this system can do. So we're excited, we're excited to show you that. So these topics we're discussing today are very familiar to the Buckley engineering team at each location. Uh, we deal with these systems frequently, and we have 10 mechanical engineers to, in the Northeast to, ready to assist with your design. So if you have any questions following the webinar, please reach out to your local Buckley contact. If you do not know who that is, uh, we can always point you in the right direction if you respond to the webinar follow-up. So if questions come up during the webinar, please feel free to use the question function on the GoToWebinar panel. One of us will field that question during or after the webinar, depending on its complexity. This webinar is eligible for PDH credits, so you will be registered for that automatically if you spend the remainder of the time with us today. So let's get started. John, thank you for being here today. Go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Matt. And as Matt said, I appreciate your time as, as well. Uh, in this presentation, we're gonna learn uh, a lot of material. We're gonna go through it somewhat quickly. As Matt said, we're gonna talk about design goal and code requirement, the challenges of traditional solutions, uh, what we believe to be the solution is jet fan and induction ventilation. We'll talk briefly about how they work, and then we'll get into the meat of it, identifying the, the optimizing tools for your ventilation design, uh, whether it be looking at an extraction strategy or a dilution strategy. We'll tie all that together with a project analysis and real work study, and then su uh, finally sum it all up with some of the solutions that that we as a design and solutions driven business partner, Buckley and System Air offer. So with that said, let's get started. Uh, first of all, you'll find that the ventilation requirements uh, are in the ASHRAE Handbook Applications Chapter 16. And in, in that study, you'll find that there was a research project completed back in 1998 that really identified the, the four key uh, elements or factors in determining the requirements for effective ventilation. One, obviously, is the acceptable level of contaminants. You know, what, what is the design goal? Uh, two, contributing to that would be the number of cars that would be in operation during peak hours. Uh, as we know, every parking garage has a different capacity and different con configuration. And based on the different configurations, we would be looking at the length of travel and the operating time for cars while in the garage. And then lastly, the emission rate of typical cars under various conditions, because if you look at the emission rates, they vary from a cold start versus warm start vehicle. Then based on that, an additional study that was also completed identified that the uh, design goal should be 25 parts per million for an eight hour exposure or 35 parts per million for up to one hour uh, as a design goal. So all of that being said, the best way to implement and to achieve the design goal would be to introduce a ventilation rate, a continuous ventilation rate. Now, if you look at International Mechanical Code, or as an example, ASHRAE Standard 62.1, they're somewhat consistent. And the, the objection or the, the objective here is to establish a continuous ventilation rate of 0.75 CFM per square foot of your parking deck. And if you employ gas detection, or as an example, if you create a demand control ventilation system, whereas your supply and exhaust fans, your, your exhaust system and ventilation system is tied to gas detection, then you can reduce that maximum continuous ventilation rate down to a lower level. It, it, most parts of the country, it's 0 0.05. But as an example, it can vary from region to region. Uh, again, as an example, if you look at in California, the, the maximum continuous ventilator, ventilation rate is 0.75 CFM, but when employing gas detection to control your ventilation system, you can only reduce it down to 0.15. Again, what's important here is to understand which of the applicable codes are being enforced or implemented in your local area. Uh, International Mechanical Code, 
ASHRAE standard 62.1 or an example NFPA standard 88A, which recommends the minimum rate be 1.0 for one CFM per square foot. So again, the importance is to understand which of the codes are in enforced within your local region. So that's a, a very quick and a very easy design goal and an element to meet. But there are challenges in meeting such a simple, such a simple goal. And there are challenges that come along with traditional ventilation systems. Here on your screen now, you're looking at a shafted system on the left, ducted system in the center, and you have your uh, wall prop exhaust fans there on the right. You see, the code requirements are very simple. That's something I'm going to reiterate throughout this presentation, and I can't overemphasize that enough. But, you know, to create effective and efficient ventilation, that is where the challenge comes in at. As you see, it's easy to move the right volume of air, but it's often challenging to do that in an effective, meaningful way. Now, why is that the problem? Well, it's a problem because airflow, whether it's mechanically introduced or it's a passive air inlet, wants to take its own natural air path. And that's part of the, the challenge, that's part of the problem. On your screen, you're seeing a CFD uh, on the right of a, a, of a garage in plan view. That same garage is in 3D model there on the left. Now, you can see the mechanical exhaust locations uh, identified by the red arrows, and you can see the passive inlet through rampways identified by the green arrows. Now, you have the long, slow moving airflow path for the exhaust fans as they bring, bring in that, that uh, supply air inlet. And it's really kind of identified and further exemplified by the long sweeping yellow arrows. You see that air wants to take its own natural path. It's hard to manipulate that air from an exhaust type of system only. And under that, some of the challenges are that dead air zones and hotspots are often created. So let's take a look at that a little bit closer. You see that same exhaust system, when uh, analyzed through CFD analysis to include carbon monoxide or contaminant loading, you see that long, slow sweeping path actually creates uh, uh, several areas where we have stagnant air. So not a lot of airflow circulating through those portions of the garage. And as a result, you see very high elevated levels of carbon monoxide while operating at maximum ventilation rate. So again, from this point, you can see that we're moving the correct volume of air we're, and, and we're doing it in a, uh, an exhaust manner, but we're moving the correct volume of air. But the challenge is to have that mean something. So throughout this parking garage here, you see even though we're moving the correct volume of air, the airflow wants to take its own natural path, identifying and leaving behind some large areas that have stagnant air which creates a dangerous and unhealthy levels of carbon monoxide. It also results in a longer run time for your supply and exhaust fans, which are in operation to clean this garage. So this isn't anything new. We, from an engineering standpoint, engineering community, this has been recognized for a long time. And to address this, engineers have employed what have been a, a, a very go-to solution, but it's also a very traditional solution. Uh, identifying these areas by uh, understanding the airflow natural path, you can see where there are areas of the garage that you need to better circulate or, or offer additional circulation or uh, more appropriately, uh, take advantage of the maximum ventilation rate that you're established in the project to more effectively ventilate the entire parking deck. Engineers have employed traditional square inline fans, or even like the, the prop fan that you see hanging down from the parking garage. Now, this is a very traditional solution, but there's, but there's a challenge that comes with this. First of all, these fans, uh, they're not high induction fans, so they, they do little to induce a, a larger volume of air. They do have limited uh, throw distance. Typically, we find that engineers, when employing a traditional solution such as this, they often require a larger number of fans to cover a minimum area. And because these fans are just simply not designed for this application, obviously, if you look at the size of that fan in, in that picture there, what engineers uh, are often uh, required to do 
is to place these fans not exactly where they need to be, but where their size will allow them to be placed. So again, it's not always effective in their application. So what we've recognized and identified as the correct and proper solution are jet fans. Whether it's a uh, high thrust axial jet fan or a high induction centrifugal jet fan, jet fans use the supply air to control the flow distribution. And because you're now manipulating the natural airflow path to move where you need it to go to circulate and to capture uh, and optimize that, that ventilation design rate into your parking garage, you're having more effective control over that airflow. And with more effective control, there's more design and the flexibility as an example in shaft uh, uh, size, shaft design, shaft location. And we also understand from the traditional HVAC standpoint, it's more effective and energy efficient to push your air than it is to try to pull your air. So let's move forward a little bit here and get into a little bit more of it. We're going to look at jet fans and how they work. So we're probably already familiar with what jet fans are, but let's just take a little bit deeper dive into how they work. See, jet fans operate off what's known as the impulse principle. Now, a jet fan's performance is not measured as a typical uh, commercial fan may be, where you have fan curves and you're looking at static pressures and, and air deliveries in, you know, in combination with static pressures. See, your jet fans, since they're operate off the principle, what that means is you take a combination of a uh, nominally small surface area at the, at the discharge of the fan and combine that with a relatively high discharge velocity, and that creates what is called the thrust, the thrust as it discharges out of the fan. Now, as that air is thrust from the discharge of the fan to the local environment in front of it, it creates friction, and this is the induction. So this, the discharge of the fan pushes out towards this local environment. It creates that friction, resulting in what's called the induction or the entrainment. So it puts into motion, when a jet fan is in operation through the impulse principle, it puts into motion airflow many times greater than its airflow rating itself. So when we look at the performance, the, the, the effective, measurable, and quantifiable performance factors of a jet fan, they are the induction factor. In other words, what is the uh, volume of airflow uh, rating that is put into motion? We look at its thrust. Now the thrust is measured in Newtons. A Newton is a SI unit of measure that takes a, a one kilogram volume of air and it is, uh, De determined that the thrust is determined by calculating the pound force it takes to take that uh, volume measurement of air and to thrust it or to push it across the space to a distance to which it reaches its terminal velocity. And where it reaches its terminal velocity, and, and for underground parking this application, the terminal velocity is one meter per second or right at 200 feet per minute. Is that that distance where it reaches its terminal velocity, that's its, its, its throw, its throw length, but it's the thrust that takes to move to that distance. And then obviously airflow. Uh, airflow is important because that's what sets everything in motion. And then lastly, as I said, the thrust, the throw length, excuse me, the throw, the throw length that it takes to get to that measured distance where it reaches its terminal velocity. So you can see where the performance measures of a, a jet fan, whether it's an, a, an axial jet fan or a centrifugal jet fan, is vastly different, different compared to your conventional commercial fans. Now what I have here now is a, a CFD video that may give you a, a better illustration of a jet fan in operation. So by this video, and there may be a little bit of a lag, so I apologize for that, but by this video you can see the overall volume of air that's put into motion, one, by the fan being in operation, but also by the volume of air that's being induced by the fan being in operation. So that's a little bit about how jet fans work. 
and what is important about understanding their uh, performance factors, how, how they're measured. Now we're really going to start to get into what the, the meaning of this presentation really gets down to when it comes to optimizing, how to utilize jet fans to optimize your underground parking ventilation systems. So the next four, four slides is going to be somewhat consistent. We're going to be talking about identifying an extraction ventilation strategy to optimize underground parking, and then a dilution uh, strategy to optimize underground parking because they're achieved by two different type of fans. One's achieved, the extraction uh, uh, strategy is achieved by using the axial jet fan, and then the dilution strategy is achieved by utilizing and implementing a high induction centrifugal jet fan. So, when we look at this, the basis data is going to be the same for these, these next four slides. We're going to be, let me go back one here real quick. When we look at this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing the two in their performance in the uh, contour plot at the X direction, the, the contour plot in velocity magnitude at 1.5 meters or approximately five feet off of the uh, garage floor, off the garage deck. Then the contour plot and velocity magnitude at side view, then we're really going to start to tie it up by identifying the area of dilution at the terminal velocity, which is the one meter per second. So the basis data is going to be the same for these next four slides. We're going to be utilizing a high thrust axial jet fan, which achieves 6,000 CFM, 51 newtons of thrust, throws 126 feet, has an induction factor of 8.1. So that axial jet fan when in operation, actually takes that 6,000 CFM and puts into motion the equivalent of just over 49,000 CFM. That's on the left. On the right, the basis data is going to be a, a high induction, high thrust centrifugal jet fan. Now, you can see it's quite a bit lower in airflow delivery, but it's at, at, at 3,500 CFM. It's, it is a high thrust fan at 51 newtons of thrust, but it's also a, a very high a throwing fan of 150 plus feet. Now, you see the red arrow there, this is also a high induction. So that 3,500 CFM by means of an induction factor of 22.9 puts into motion while the fan is in operation, that 3,500 CFM puts into motion the equivalent of 80,000 plus CFM. So on the bottom left, you see the throw distance to terminal velocity from the axial jet fan. And in this CFD profile at the x-axis, you see the uh, configuration or, or you see the airflow identified. Now you see it stays, it's a high thrust axial jet fan, so the airstream stays somewhat tight to the ceiling. You see the dark blue, that represents what we call negative velocities or in, in more practical terms, that's where we start to get some turbulence. We start to get some reverse airflow. So as you see, it stays somewhat tight to the ceiling all the way out through its throw. Let's contrast that over here on the right with the high induction centrifugal jet fan. The same x-axis, the same type of a CFD analysis, and you see the high induction centrifugal jet fan you really don't start, start to experience any negative velocities or any turbulence until you get about to the um, 20, almost 30 meter mark. And there, it's still somewhat minimal because the difference is in the high induction centrifugal jet fans, it's not an airstream that stays tight to the ceiling, it's an airstream that envelops the entire parking deck from the ceiling all the way down to the from, from sitting in the garage all the way down to the parking deck itself. Now, we're going to look at, the, the again, the, the same two fans, the same basis data, but now we're looking at the contour plot and the velocity magnitude at the five foot mark, 1.5 meters. On the left, and, and, and I'll tell you in a minute why this is important, but, but on the left, you see the airflow, you see the plot, for the axial jet fan, it's, it starts to broaden out a little bit and you do, you do see some negative velocities there in the blue, but it's somewhat short. Now, now this is a, a cross section. This is in plain view, but this is taking a cross section at the five foot mark. 
we're, we're showing you the airflow characteristics because you have to understand the airflow characteristics to understand which is the best fan for the application neck and extraction versus a dilution. So you see it does start to top out here, but over here on the right, when you're looking at the same contour plot, and again, that same five foot mark, you have a much more consistent throw still using the high induction centrifugal jet fan. Now, this next slide here may start to make a little more sense to you as, as we tie it somewhat together. Because now what we're showing you here is the contour plot in velocity magnitude at side view. So what we're doing is we're taking a look at, at the at, at an elevation view here of each of the fan discharge profiles, the axial on top, the centrifugal on the bottom. And now we've overlaid the approximate five foot mark for gas detection. Now, this is important. And, and, and this, this also illustrates why I was illustrating, or this further demonstrates why I was showing for you the previous slide with the contour plot velocity magnitude at 1.5 meters. You see, there's, there's no uh, coincidence as to why gas detection manufacturers would tell you to best place their sensors anywhere from three to six feet off of the garage floor. And in fact, most all manufacturers kind of zero in on that five foot mark. Well, one reason is that's when we start to get down to the pedestrian level, and that's the, the, you know, an effective breathing zone for most pedestrians. But also there's a little more uh, a technical aspect behind it as well. See, this is the area where you have majority of your contaminants, whether it's you know, nitrogen dioxide or your carbon monoxide, this is where they stay somewhat aloft in your parking environment. See, when you look at the specific gravity of air, being 1.0, you realize that your carbon monoxide and your nitrogen dioxides, they're approximately 0.997. So they're slightly lighter than air. Now, they're not so much lighter that they rise completely to the top of the, of the ceiling of the parking garage, or they're not so much, they're, they're lighter and they're not heavier to where they sink down to the bottom of your parking, the deck of the parking garage. They stay somewhat aloft in the local environment within the parking garage. So this is why it's important for your, your jet fans uh, airflow to get to that five foot mark and actually down beneath it and all the way through it. Because that's what, is, is what we're starting to create as the area of dilution. So you see here in the middle slide, the axial jet fan at the five foot mark it really doesn't start to get down until about uh, 40 feet. And it really kind of tops out be at below that five foot mark at about 65 feet. See, an axial jet fan relies on that jet stream of air to pull the air and contaminants up into it. That's how it, it effectively induces a larger volume of air. Whereas, and, and just quite the opposite here with your high induction centrifugal jet fan, the image at the bottom of, the, of your screen, you see the high induction centrifugal jet fan fully envelops its discharge from side to side and from top of the garage all the way down to the parking deck by pushing air and pulling air along with it, a, a larger volume of air over a wider area. And you see once it breaches that five foot mark, it gets all the way down to the parking deck and it stays from the ceiling to the parking deck. Its airflow distribution stays from the ceiling of the, of the garage down to the parking deck all the way out through its length of throw. And that's why that is a, a more appropriate fan for a dilution strategy. Now, I wanna tell you here, just for uh, it, it, your clarity within these two illustrations, what we've done is we've limited the minimum velocity through these images to be to the terminal velocity or to uh, one meter per second, just under 200 feet per minute. Now we're moving on to the, the last image here. This is the contour plot velocity of magnitude limited to its throw length at the terminal velocity of one meter per second. Again, the image on the left is for the axial jet fan, the high thrust, 
axial jet fan. And again, you can see we inserted the five foot line for the, the, the demarcation of gas detection. And from the CFD cutaway, you can see that the majority of the airstream stays tight to the ceiling. Now, we've limited the, the CFD imagery here to uh, er everything at 196 feet per minute or below. And as you, again, you can see majority of that airflow stays tight to the ceiling. In fact, if we were to open that up even more to say half that, or to a half a meter per second or 98 feet per minute, you can see by the gradients of the color, we're still not effectively getting down to that five foot mark with the axial jet fan. But we'll, we'll contrast that over here to the right with the high induction centrifugal jet fan. We are at the same terminal velocity of 196 feet per minute. And you can see it's a much larger enveloping area. Now this is the area of dilution. So this is the effective area from the discharge of the high induction centrifugal jet in that you're moving these contaminants and diluting these con contaminants towards the exhaust. So it's considerably, considerably larger. Now from that, what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about you know, some of the challenges and some of the uh, advantages of, of one of the systems versus the other. So you see on your screen, uh, top left image, that is a, a high thrust axial jet fan in, uh, in operation at, at a job site. And then over here on the right, you have uh, one of the low profile uh, high induction centrifugal jet fans. Now they each have their own features and benefits, but let's just talk a little bit about some of the challenges and advantages of one versus the other. The image you see in the middle, uh, we have an axial jet fan, eight labeled A and one labeled B. And you can also see by the image above there, to be fully effective and to take advantage of the full benefit of the, uh, of the discharge or the ventilation of a high thrust axial jet fan, the discharge of that fan needs to be fully beneath structure. And again, that's identified in the picture above there. But that's not always the case. That's not always applicable. We don't always have that luxury in underground parking. So there are a couple of different things that can be done. And that's what takes us to illustration B. When your uh, design uh, centers around an, an extraction strategy utilizing high thrust axial jet fans, but your garage configuration won't allow you to be obstruction free for the length of throw, you have to use deflectors. And that's what's identified in the image at the bottom left of your screen. Now, if you specify and utilize air deflectors for the discharge of your axial jet fan, you may not compromise the full benefit of the ventilation if you follow a couple parameters. One is the inlet from the axial jet fan shouldn't be any closer than approximate eight feet away from structure and whereas the outlet should be no closer than approximately 10 to 12 feet, again, while using deflectors. And again, because your axial jet fan relies on a jet stream air pulling uh, the, the induced volume of air and contaminants up into its jet stream, it really should be much more than eight foot off of the garage floor to be fully effective. Now, whereas, Let's contrast that over here with your high induction, high thrust centrifugal jet fan. They're designed to be installed tight to the ceiling because they, they bring their air inlet from beneath their centrifugal fan. They bring their air inlet from beneath the fan and discharge out the side. And because of that, there aren't great uh, restrictions on where they can be placed as, as far as their proximity to structure whether behind on the sides or within front of it. Now, when you do have a, a challenge configuration and you're using uh, a, a, a beam configuration like you have there on the left, the only, the only portion of the high thrust, excuse me, the high induction, a high thrust centrifugal jet band that needs to be beneath structure is just the discharge opening itself, which is approximately just under three inches. So this gives you some of the advantages and disadvantages of one system versus another. 
So moving along, and we're doing pretty good for time here. What I want to do now is I want to talk, talk to you about project analysis and energy study. One versus, not one versus another, but I have two real world applications here that are going to talk to you about how jet fans have impacted uh, designs and, and applications. So one is a project called Strauss Fifth Avenue in San Diego, California. And in this particular project, the engineer was facing some very real challenges, in, especially in conflict with architectural. As you can see here, the only locations that were being allowed architecturally for the supply and exhaust shafts were identified by the green at the top of the page, the red at the bottom. We can all can see that there's going to be some short cycling there. So the engineer on the project went to what was his best go-to solution, and that was to put in a ducted system, a ducted exhaust system, to bring the air in from the supply shaft and have it pulled across the entire deck of the parking garage for the exhaust. Now, this is the, it, it's a very traditional solution, but through this uh, 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 analysis here, we're going to show you how you can actually eliminate ductwork as part of your uh, exhaust system and part of your ventilation system in underground parking while still being extremely effective and efficient in the process. So what we first do is we look at the actual air flows using this ducted system. And you can see through the CFD, we're, we're obviously having some short cycling down here at the bottom because they have the supply air uh, uh, pushing air in, but you also do have good airflow movement up into the areas of the exhaust duct intakes. Now, again, it's, it's one thing to effectively move the right volume of air, but to effectively move the right volume of air while reducing carbon monoxide, that is part of the challenge. So what I want to share with you now about this particular project is when we became involved, System Air and our, our local rep in, in the California market, when we became involved in this project, the, the engineer asked us how we can help him eliminate ductwork on this particular project that was in the process at that time of going through plan checking for permitting. So that was part of the challenge. So the duct system that I just showed you, when we look at the CFD analysis, of the actual carbon monoxide, again, based on the ASHRAE guidelines for introducing carbon monoxide uniformly throughout the parking garage based on those four key uh, criteria factors, you see while operating that duct system at maximum ventilation rate at 0.75 CFM, there are areas of the garage well over 200 parts per million. And in fact, there's a, a, a overwhelming majority of the garage is 100 to 161 or 80 parts per million nowhere near the design goal. So system error, we work with the local engineer and we implemented a strategy that said we can use a dilution strategy, eliminate the duct work and implement into the design some high induction centrifugal jet pans. In this case, it was the system error IV Smart EC. So all that duct work on this particular level, as, as an example, all that duct work was replaced by these High induction jet fans. Now, your first pass may be to say, yeah, John, I see what you did there. You took away a lot of what would seemingly be inexpensive fire rate at rectangular duct work and replaced them with some very high value specialty fans. But nothing's further from the truth here because even when we're looking at first pass cost through to installation, the jet fans were approximately a third of the cost of the duct system. So it's a very effective system, but now let's also look at how well it performed. You can see here at the top of the page, the ducted system where the, the parking garage at maximum ventilation rate had areas exceeding 200 parts per million. Your bottom image there is at maximum ventilation rate, your parking garage in this particular project by, by implementing and optimizing the airflow and taking full advantage and, and fully circulating that maximum CFM rate coming into the into the garage, there wasn't a single area of the garage that exceeded 35 parts per million. Dead on hit design goal. So there was a real, real uh, impact there, 86% reduction in carbon monoxide in comparing the two systems while eliminating 
ductwork in the process. Now, this particular project, what I want to do is I want to share with you, this is a, a project that is at uh, in operation at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. Now, for this project analysis, we're going to talk about energy efficiencies while effectively removing carbon monoxide in underground parking. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at creating a steady state analysis. In other words, based on the ASHRAE recommended guidelines for introducing carbon monoxide uniformly into a parking garage, we're going to look at the maximum carbon monoxide uh, that, that would be introduced based on the space and configuration of the garage. And then we're going to, that's, that's the steady state analysis. And then we're going to create what's called a transient state analysis, where we transition from your steady state analysis without any of the garage ventilation system being turned on. What we're doing is we're illustrating the, the, the high rate of uh, carbon monoxide that would be in, experienced in this parking facility without any ventilation. Then we're going to the, the transient state analysis where the exhaust systems, supply and exhaust fans are turned on. And we're going to look at the energy and time that, that is required to effectively take the carbon monoxide and reduce it down to the design goal. So down here at the bottom left, you see what's in red, your mechanical extract, extraction fans. Up here at the top right in green, your mechanical supply fans. Every one of the golden boxes that have the, the letters IF, those are the locations for the induction fans. And then you have passive inlet through ramp entryways and, and louvered areas at the same time. So first thing is introducing the, the maximum carbon monoxide based off the ASHRAE guidelines. You can see the space and size and configuration of this garage, this garage at, at, at maximum operation would be 672 parts per million. That's that's a lot. And, and you can see it's really kind of uh, kind of uh, identified in that center part of the garage there. But you know, you have areas that's uh, you know 95 to 100 parts per million out through other portions of the garage. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to here is as I said earlier in the uh, beginning of the presentation, part of the challenge is, is to identify the airflow's natural path identify the dead air zones resulting from that, and then effectively treating them by jet fan placement to better circulate that air. So what we're gonna do here now is we have, here's the results and I'm gonna show you in the CFD videos. The scenario one where it was the, the high concentration of 672 parts per million, again, by introducing the contaminants based on the ASHRAE guidelines, based on the space of the garage. Once the supply and exhaust fans were kicked on, it took 39 minutes to reduce. Now, now that's a traditional sweep ventilation system. And this is a system, systems, it, it's one of the systems that is in place and designed all day, every day throughout the country by mechanical engineers uh, in, in every part of the country. Because it is a, 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 an acceptable, uh, means of effectively removing carbon monoxide until you start to actually look at the volume of carbon monoxide that's affected by those systems. So it took 39 minutes. Now, over here on the right, scenario two, the same 672 parts per million, the same uh, supply and exhaust system turned on, but now optimized with high induction centrifugal jet fans. So we're going to look at them. 39 minutes down to 8.3 minutes. Now, you can see here, this is time lapse, so it's not the full 39 minutes. I don't think I could talk that long. But you can see here a couple of different things. One, as I said, airflow wants to take its own natural path. Remember down here at the bottom left, we had the mechanical exhaust fans. You see a lot of short cycling here because you have a passive inlet through a ramp and a louver opening down here with your supply, excuse me, with your exhaust fan you have a lot of short cycling. So a lot of work to overcome by the supply air coming in from the top. So you can see air is coming in, actually a little counterintuitive. You have a lot of negative velocity right there in the center of that garage. Yes, it's moving the correct volume of air. And it's moving it according to the, the applicable design goal. And it's moving it in accordance with the 
uh, uh, design standard that is, is in place. But again, the challenge is how to do this effectively. So we take the same system, turn on the supply and exhaust fans, but now this system is being optimized by the implementation of these high induction centrifugal jet fans. First thing I want to call your attention to is down here at the bottom left. We no longer have that short cycling. Because if you recall, there's a jet fan placed down in there because we're using the supply air to control the flow by means of the jet fan to control that flow of air, pushing it into the locations of the garage where we need. So you see a much more effective uh, cleansing of this parking garage. But also from the conclusion here, you can see the previous system supplied exhaust fans alone. It took 17.5 kilowatt hours. Now the same system, supply and exhaust fans being supported and optimized by your high induction centrifugal jet fan, a high induction centrifugal jet fan, it took the runtime to cleanse that garage from 672 parts per million down to 25 parts per million. It went from 17.5 kilowatt hours down to 5.3 kilowatt hours. So in other words, a nearly 70% energy reduction to cleanse that garage. Now, the, the, the goal here is in becoming energy efficient while effectively removing the carbon monoxide is to utilize your optimizing fans, your high induction centrifugal jet fans, to allow your cold compliant fans, so fans that are providing the 0.75 CFM, which they, they are the larger horsepower fans for the supply and exhaust, to allow them to operate more effectively less frequently with shorter run times. That's where we become energy efficient. So it's almost a little counterintuitive here. You can see originally the, the supply and exhaust fans alone were 30, you know, uh, constituted 36 horsepower. And we actually introduced additional horsepower into the project, 16 additional horsepower by means of the uh, high induction centrifugal jet fans for total 52 horsepower on the, the project in the garage. But because your jet fans optimizing the airflow, allow your supply and exhaust fans to run more effectively uh, for lesser run times, you become more energy efficient. So as we start to tie things up a little bit more here, we're gonna summarize some of this. And, and what it means. And so what it really means is whether your traditional ventilation design is a full sweeping system alone or a, a, a sweeping slash ducted system, implementing uh, jet fans to optimize your ventilation system, whether it's a, a high thrust axial jet fan or whether it's a high thrust, high induction centrifugal jet fan, you can expect to see a real reduction of carbon monoxide in 60 to 70 percent while working to achieve energy efficiencies in 60 to 70 percent. But what I want to do now is I want to talk to you a little bit about what we, when I say we, I mean Buckley Associates and System Air, what we as a uh, solutions-driven business partner can assist you with, what we provide. Well, first of all, we provide design and layout assistance. We're looking at every job uniquely unto itself. We select the right kind of fan, looking at the entire configuration and application of your parking garage, considering you know, ramp entryways, openings, uh, louvered inlets, shafts, wall prop fans. We look at them and identify which is the best uh, strategy to support and to optimize your ventilation system. An extraction using high thrust axial jet fans or dilution utilizing high thrust, high induction centrifugal jet fans. And we also provide a, a layout illustrating, as you see on your screen there, the correct jet fan placement and the expected impact of performance by that jet fan in operation. We give you that, that visualization of what that fan will do in its operation. Now we also provide CFD analysis to support our designs. Now, I want to be very clear about this in the front. We do not provide CFD analysis on every single project because not every single project is complex enough to require CFD analysis. 
but we do provide CFD analysis to support our designs, uh, especially on those uh, challenging garage configurations, or maybe where there's a challenging uh, client to uh, to convey the, the the means and the abilities and the capabilities of your ventilation design and ventilation system. Now, when we provide the CFD analysis, it is 99% of the time through submittal phase. Now, we commission the CFD analysis through a third party, third party engineering CFD engineering firm. We do not uh, uh, run these CFDs ourselves. We want to maintain our industry integrity in doing that. But we do this at no cost to you, the engineer, because we're doing this to one, validate uh, the, the design that we're assisting you with, but also to help validate uh, the implementation of jet fans to optimize underground parking strategies in the overall market. Now, there are occasions that we provide uh, CFD analysis during design development phase, but that usually takes place from a close and careful conversation between system air, uh, Buckley Associates, and the design engineer to understanding all the parameters of, of the project. But when we do, we always provide CFD analysis that includes contaminant loading. In other words, number five at the bottom right of your screen, seal simulation results. Now, there are other companies that promote CFD analysis to validate their design and to provide an engineering tool to you through the design phase of a project. But they typically only provide velocity vectors and airflow patterns. Now, if you go back to previously what I was showing you, if you only look at velocity vectors or airflow patterns, and you're not looking at what's happening to the carbon monoxide within that parking environment and within that airflow, every job works. That's no different than moving the correct volume of air. No different than moving the correct volume of air. So that's why every CFD that we commission also includes contaminant loading to show you what's happening to the carbon monoxide in the compounds within that environment, within that airflow. Now, in case you were wondering, one of the, the very first slides I showed you, uh, the area, the garage that under maximum ventilation rate uh, had areas of 1,500 parts per million. In fact, uh, the overwhelming majority of the garage was 200 to 300 parts per million at maximum ventilation rate for that uh, typical sweeping system. System Air designed uh, a, a garage ventilation system which was optimized by jet fans. And as a result, at maximum ventilation, there wasn't a single area that exceeded, well, I take that back. The majority of the garage was 65 parts per million. There was one small, tiny area circled down at the bottom that was 99 parts per million. So you can see the great impact and reduction of 1,500 parts per million, and in average, what was two to 300 parts per million, down to an average of 65 parts per million, but one area seen 99 parts per million. Very, very, very effective. Now, lastly, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about uh, what we, in, in, in addition to the services and, and the design assistance that Buckley and System Air can provide you, I want to talk to you about some of the solutions and, and products that we have. Because at System Air, we also offer uh, the full range of jet fans. We offer the high induction uh, centrifugal jet fans in a very low profile manner or a standard profile manner but we also offer the uh, high thrust axial jet fans. So we're gonna look at these real quick. One is the IV50EC. Now, the first thing I wanna point out is, as System Air, we, we take the, the credibility of the performance and the data that we provide very seriously. So our entire jet fan family, their performance is certified. It is measured to and certified to the the latest AMCA 250 standard for jet fan performance for thrust air and sound. That's important. That, that's very important because there are some, some competitors in the marketplace who are, are still using the, the old standards. And there are some competitors in the marketplace that are using uh, an international standard, ISO standard 13347, which if you look at a third party independent review of the standard, it specifically calls out that that standard is not to be used for measuring acoustic performance of a jet fan. So I call that out as all of our jet fans that we design, engineer, and manufacture right here in the United States 
certified to the, the latest AMCA 250 standard specific for jet fan performance. But the IV50EC is the EC driven fan. When I say it's a low profile fan, you look at the top right in the red triangle there, this is the highest performing, lowest profile jet fan available in the marketplace at just, just 10 and a quarter inches in profile. Now, uh, other measures of performance, as I said, identified the, the triangles there on the left, obviously was very important. This is a this is an EC driven fan, so it operates 208 to 277, 50 or 60 Hertz. Uh, because it is EC driven, you have uh, variable speed controls from pulse width modulation, zero to 10 volt, four to 20 milliamp. It become a very effective part of your building management system. It's also very quiet in its effectiveness. At 100% speed, at high operation, it only produces 73 dBA at three meters. Very, very, very effective. And this fan, the, the discharge of the fan is factory set at the optimum angle to achieve maximum enveloping airflow and maximum dilution throughout its throat. You'll see here, this is a, a CFD uh, video of the jet fan in operation of the IV 50 EC in operation, and you can see how it fully envelops the parking deck from top to bottom in this dilution strategy. Now, also, we have the axial jet fans. Um, again, AMCA certified, uh, built right in Lenexa, Kansas. Uh, we, we have them in two configurations or two sizes. Uh, one's the 355 and one's the 400, so approximately 16 inches in diameter up to 20 inches in diameter. They get to be a little bit large, and by Sheer design and performance, axial jet fans are louder. There's a reason why they have integrated silencers. They are louder. The AGR 400, as an example, uh, it operates at 79 dBA at three meters at, at full speed, and the AGR 355 is 81 dBA at three meters at full speed. Now, we also have our IV Smart EC. Now, this is probably the most widely designed with jet fan in the marketplace today for a couple different reasons. Obviously, first, it's a it's a low profile fan. Now I'll talk to you a minute about why, you know, how just low profile it is. But this fan also certified to the AMCA 250 standard for uh, CRP certified ratings program for jet fan performance, specific to jet fan. But this jet fan by the dimensions down at the bottom right, you see the red triangle. This is just under six inches. It's five and seven eighths inches in profile. It, it operates off uh, a, a dual ECM motor, uh, 208 to, four, to 240 volt. This jet fan is high thrust, high induction. So its airflow rating per AMCA is 1,482 CFM, but it produces 11 newtons of thrust, an induction factor of 28.6. It throws 129 feet. So that 1,482 CFM, when this fan is in operation, it puts into motion the equivalent of 42,459 CFM, and it is extremely quiet. Per the AMCA uh, certification, this fan operating at high speed operates only at 64 dBA at three meters. So it's ECM motor, speed controllable, pulse width modulation, zero to 10 volt, but also, we just introduced this fan in July of this year with our Modbus communication and BACnet capability. So this fan can truly become an integrated solution into your building management systems. It can communicate directly through Modbus to your building management system to the fan or through an optional gateway that we provide. It can uh, connect via BACnet and you can seamlessly connect up to 32 fans one time. Integrated SMC uh, cloud support and, and, and enables remote monitoring. Uh, notification functions allows for SMS email for troubleshooting or, or environment conditions. Onboard diagnostics allow for easy troubleshooting for both serial and Ethernet communications. And users can view the data via configurable dashboard and download historical data to utilize your jet fans now as a, a very effective tool and, and component of your building management system. So that gives you an idea about what we provide into the marketplace. Lastly, System Air, we are a true multinational company. 
we have a physical presence in the Americas, Asia Pacific, Western Europe, Eastern and Eastern Europe, Central Asia, Africa, the Middle East. Uh, we are a design engineering manufacturing company of all things innovation, but our specialty that we're focusing on here in the United States is for our jet fans for underground parking. In North America, is, uh, our manufacturing is in Lenexa, Kansas, and we also have two AMCA certified laboratories in, in our facility in Lenexa, Kansas. And rounding out our North American operations, we have manufacturing and uh, laboratories for our heating and cooling equipment in Tilsonburg, Ontario, Canada. And we have energy recovery laboratories and manufacturing in New Brunswick, Canada. We have just a little over 6,000 associates. We have a presence in 50 different countries. That we are not the world's largest corporation, but we have a great strength of resource and engineering. Now, what I hope I've done is I hope I've given you information to understand the design goals and the core requirements and just how simple they are to meet, but how challenging they are to meet them in an energy efficient, effective manner. Why jet fans should be considered part of the solution and how they can optimize and, and maximize your ventilation rate to become fully effective in your underground parking. A, a little bit about how they work, how they can work to more fully effectively ventilate your underground parking system while becoming energy efficient in the process. So with that, uh, I, I gladly welcome any questions that you may have and I appreciate your time and we'll turn it back over to Matt at this point. Hey, hey John, thank you. Um, so first of all, we actually do have some questions and I was uh, holding off because I knew that you would answer one of them. Um, do you have that questions pane that you can open up really quick, John? I do, let's, let's open questions here. And let's so see. should say uh, from I think you should see that right there. If if the effective if the throw is 154 feet, what's the effective width? The, the effective width varies by model. As an example, when we look at the airflow e effectiveness, as an example, the IV Smart EC, the the actual airflow itself has an effective width of approximately 20 feet. But you're looking at an approximate uh, 40 to 50 feet when you look at the volume of the air that's induced. Now, we, when we look at your, uh, as an example, the, the larger IV50 EC, you can see the modeling uh, through the CFD that actually represents 60 foot wide, a, a 60 foot wide. And you can see that it was actually fully enveloping. So you can realistically expect uh, anywhere from 60 foot and, and even a little bit wider when you look at the larger IV50 EC. Great. Do you see the other questions there or, or do you want me to keep reading them? Well, you can read them because they're not, I mean, they're only showing up one line at a time. Okay, and... that's fine. All right. Uh, so what about noise? Is it louder than traditional design? I know that you mentioned that you kind of compared it to other fans, but what what would you say about that? Actually, the only one that would be louder than your traditional would be the axial jet fan. Your uh, IV uh, 50 EC at 73 dBA at three meters or your IV smart EC at 64 dBA at three meters, they're actually uh, a little bit less than your traditional uh, uh, fans. Like, like earlier when I showed you the the square inlines or like the, uh, the, the large prop fans, they're actually considerably larger in this application. Great. <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna say, um, you know, the smart IV EC, it's with an EC motor, it's a bit smaller. It's definitely a uh, not a very noisy fan. We see, we we like to spec those on a lot of projects, but um, we're also obviously open to doing the IV, uh, what is it, the IV 50 IV, right? Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's, it's the larger profile, it's the higher, Higher thrust, higher newtons. It's a 50, uh, 50 newton fan as opposed to the IV uh, Smart EC. But it, again, it, it's it's a higher profile, but it's still only 10 and a quarter inches, which is approximately about four inches lower profile than any of the competition can can match in the marketplace. Great. Um, okay, so one more, or actually two more questions. Uh, when put between the beams, what is the minimum distance between the induction fan and the structure. So I guess what would you consider the clearance in some of these fans? 
Well, on your act, if you look at the actual FN, you really need to have full uh, a clearance from any obstruction. But as I said in the previous uh, in, in the slide, if you utilize deflectors to deflect that airflow down, you can uh, utilize that and stay about uh, 10 feet away, maybe 10 to 12 feet away from any type of a structure. Now, in your uh, cent centrifugal jet fans, the by design itself is designed to uh, discharge the air in a downward motion towards the, the parking deck. So you don't have a, a great deal of limitation or restriction with that. Uh, and, and again, per that slide, if you have an area where you're right up next to a beam, the only section of that fan, you can be right up next to it with that uh, jet fan, the, the, the induction jet fan, but the only portion that needs to be below the beam is uh, approximately three inches, which is the discharge. Great. Um, last question, in Massachusetts Public Work, uh, what would be specify or ask you to or what would we consider specifying as an equal um, for the low profile fans uh i could answer this one i think what we would what we recommend is uh specifying green heck uh as an equal or um either zoo fans or flatwoods something like that what, do you have any opinion on that john uh no no real opinion probably if if uh if asking that question, probably the first thing I would recommend is, yeah, you can go to a Green Heck fan. Green Heck makes a, a 2100 CFM, a 25 Newton thrust, uh, high induction, low profile. It's, it's it's about the same size as our IV50, about the larger, uh, but it's probably the closest that you're going to get to the IV uh, Smarty CSR's uh, profile and size. Uh, when you look at a, a Zoo fan, they're larger in profile. Uh, and when you look at flat woods, they're they're obviously larger in profile and a little bit. Uh, they, they produce a little bit. Uh, they're a little more aggressive acoustically. Let's put it like that. Okay. Great. Well, John, I really appreciate it. And everybody listening right now, uh, I can't emphasize enough that John's team is very quick to get back to us with designs. It's really just a matter of sending us your area plans and elevation plans for your garage space and we'll get it back to you in a matter of uh, a day or two um, at most. And um, they're, they're very quick and uh, we've seen a lot of traction with this technology since we started promoting it in the Boston area. So um, I think John's pretty happy with it. Uh, so um, again, I appreciate everybody's time. <laughs> Great. Appreciate everybody's time today. I hope everybody enjoyed the webinar and got something useful out of it. Again, if you have any questions relative to what was discussed today, or any of the products that Buckley represents, please feel reach out uh, to reach out to us or your Buckley contact. If you don't know who that is, you can reach out to myself or Nikki in response to our webinar follow-up email. Um, it will point you in the right direction. So uh, with that said, uh, we appreciate your time today. John, thank you, and uh, everybody have a good day. Thank you, appreciate it. Take care.